You ever wonder what 80 year olds say they would have done different if they had a chance to do it over again? Well, I had the opportunity to golf with a couple of gentlemen today. One of them was 81 years old and I asked him the question. I asked him at 81, what is it that you would do different today if you could go back and do it all over again? And I think the answer will surprise you. So many of you out there know that I like to go golfing and I try to diversify my golfing experiences by golfing with different people. And so I golfed earlier in the week and I met a gentleman and he asked me if I wanted to golf with him on Friday, which is today. So we went out today and it was myself, him, and one of his friends. I, I just asked him, I said, hey, um, I have a YouTube channel and I try to give people good, relevant information about early retirement and things of that nature. And so I had the opportunity here with you to understand from you what are some of the things or what's the one thing that you would do differently and uh, now, since you've retired, looking back. And he thought about it for a second. He said, the one thing that I would do different is I would focus on my education. And so I was surprised. I thought he would have went back and played the winning lottery tickets, or I thought he would have taken a million dollar job that he had or something like that. But he says, no, he, he went on to explain to me that he was in the field of water disinfection, and I guess he had been in water disinfection for a long time, and I didn't know water disinfection was a thing, but he was a water disinfection guy, and he worked for Siemens, and he worked all around the world in water disinfection. And in water disinfection, the main focus of water disinfection is biology. Now, the funny part about it this guy told me when he was in high school, when he was in college, he hated biology. He didn't like anything about biology. He didn't like science. He didn't like math. He didn't like any of it. And in fact, getting into um, the hygiene, the disinfection part of water, he fell into that by surprise because he had met somebody and they gave him a job and this job was a low level job. And then he got into the water piece of it, the water disinfection piece. And this isn't water treatment, so it's something almost completely different on a broader scale. We got in this whole conversation about the different types of microbes and, and, and things like that inside of the water. He started to talk about how when he was in school, he was learning math, he was learning science, he was learning biology. None of it made sense to him because he never had the practical application. And so now, after working in water disinfection and dealing with the biology, all of that stuff started to make sense to him. And I, I think when you, re, to relate that on a day-to-day -day basis, if you think about algebra, 2x equals six. And you say, well, why do I need to know that 2x equals six and how to get there? Well, if you wanna know how many eggs you can get and the eggs are two dollars each and you only have six dollars how many eggs can you get well two times three so oh, i could get three for six dollars but at the point that it starts to make sense it starts to come together and so i i thought it was interesting because when he was talking about learning he wasn't just talking about learning in school but he was talking about learning overall we talked a little bit about my gardening and in the gardening world you're dealing with a lot of biology. And I talked to him about the things that are called beneficial nematodes. And beneficial nematodes are these single-celled nematodes that eat the grubs, and the grubs eat the roots in your garden. So anybody that gardens knows about the grubs in the garden, and there's been, and I said, these beneficial nematodes, their whole life is one inch, maybe one square inch of soil, and they'll eat everything within that one inch of soil, the beneficial stuff. They don't eat everything. There's all kinds of different nematodes, but there's beneficial nematodes that'll eat the stuff that should be eaten so your garden can flourish. Or you look at earthworms and people have, they say, oh, earthworms, and they think of earthworms as a, or worms as a simple animal. But worms have multiple cardiovascular systems. Worms have a very important place in the ecosystem with aerating soil and providing nitrogen to soil and allowing things to grow. Uh, you can use them to go fishing. You can catch different things with them. And so when things start to make sense, 
then it builds the capacity to learn more about that thing. And when you look at your life, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know. We say, we don't know this, we don't know that, or I'm sure a bunch of you are out there saying, I don't like math. And so you don't ever focus on doing math, but guess what? You have a budget, you have a checkbook, you were able to budget enough money to buy the phone or the computer or the television that you're watching this channel on. So at some level, you're dealing with money. You just have to deal with money that makes sense. And I think what he was trying to say was that he spent so much time dismissing things that he didn't think he liked that he lost the opportunity or delayed the opportunity to learn the things that were really interesting. And so now this guy is a biologist and he started to learn the biology. I think he went back to school and learned a bunch of biology because he had to know about this water disinfection and the biology behind water disinfection and everything about water disinfection. And he wishes he would have learned that sooner and not dismissed the learnings that he could have gotten from water disinfection when he was earlier. So uh, as I continue to golf, I'm going to continue to bring you words of wisdom that I get from some of these old timers, because I just think there's a lot out there. I, I think I have some things that I bring to the table and that I'm able to share with you. And I, I do that a couple of times a week and just share with you uh, what's either going through my mind or something that I've learned or just some perspective that helped me get to where I am. Uh, I don't think I have all the answers, but I think the set of answers that I have were able to get me to the place where I found financial independence at 51. And so I think there's something that you can take out of that to help you relate. But I'm at a point where I'm in the second stage and I want to maximize the second stage. And so when you start to maximize the second stage, what does that look like? Because I've never lived the second stage. So I go and I ask them, but I also want to make sure that I provide each of you the benefit of learning what I learned, because at the end of the day, it really comes down to all of us standing up together as opposed to some of us falling because we don't have the information that can help us uh, create the life that we want to live. And if some of these things are resonating for you, uh, please share it with your friends, share it with your neighbor, share it with people in an Uber, share it with people on the street, take a QR code and drop a QR code somewhere. And if you want a QR code, let me know and I'll email it to you. Uh, it's, it's really about just me sharing my story, sharing my experiences and sharing my thoughts about things that I think are going to be able to translate and help you live the life that you want to live. So um, on that note, I just wanted to get this one out because I, I thought it was interesting. It's, it's straight from the horse's mouth. I'm not going to tell you the guy's name because I don't want you to tell him I called him a horse. <laughs> but uh, it's straight out of the horse's mouth. Um, I wanted to make sure I got it to you. So on that note, um, have a good rest of your day. And uh, I will talk to you soon.